happy to invite Major General Retired Professor Itzik Ben Israel, Conference Chairman of Cyber Week and Director of the Blavatnik Interdisciplinary Research Center in Tel Aviv University, and Professor Eviatar Matania, first and former Director General at the INCD and Head of Security Studies Program, School of Political Sciences, Government, and International Affairs in Tel Aviv University for a unique session on cyber and AI. I encourage you to ask questions during their talk. Good afternoon for everyone. Um, some 10 years ago, we started the revolution, which was uh, um, uh, for the last 10 years was very uh, known here in Israel. And this is a cyber revolution. I had the honor then to uh, submit to the government the guidelines, the principles, and the first and the recommendations, of course. And the first recommendation was to set up a new function in the prime minister office, uh, which nowadays we call the National Cyber uh, Israeli National Cyber Directorate. And the first uh, director of this uh, new um, uh, entity uh, was Professor Eviatar Metania, and we are now going to talk in the next half an hour, going to talk about uh, the lessons that we learned from the first evolution, and especially uh, what we can take from this to the next revolution, which is the revolution in artificial intelligence, since uh, the same prime minister two years ago appointed both of us uh, to uh, submit to the government uh, something similar to what we did in uh, 2010, but this time uh, with the goal of making Israel one of the top uh, five uh, leading countries in the world in uh, artificial intelligence, AI technology, not in cyber technology. So uh, Professor Vietar Matania, who is uh, sitting uh, in, um, in peacetime, Next room to me, uh, we are both, uh, we both belong to the Tel Aviv University. Uh, please, uh, I would like you to start and talk about the lessons that we learned and what can be, what is relevant to the next revolution, the AI revolution. Thank you, Isik. Um, I would start with uh, trying to explain why uh, we're trying to, to learn from the cyber revolution that Israel uh, has gone through. And uh, in, in this aspect, uh, the cyber itself is not so interesting, not uh, exactly what we did with, with the cyber, but what uh, we can learn from our success in cyber and take into the AI uh, initiative that you are now leading. And um, I think that the first uh, lesson that we have is a governmental resolution to view uh, the subject, the issue, as an, uh, a national, with a national interest and that the government should invest in and take it as one of the most important issues that the government should advance. Because if, if you um, try to use the cyber, Israel didn't start with understanding the cyber security is important in 2010 or 2011 or 12 when the uh, directorate was uh, established, or uh, when you, uh, uh, when you uh, put the recommendations to the government. We started with the dealing, um, uh, we started dealing with cybersecurity uh, long before, and uh, we had some uh, um, governmental department in one of our security organizations dealing with, with the defending our critical infrastructure. But the very important um, um, process that we went through during the last decade started with the understanding of the prime minister and the government that this issue is more than just another subject that the government should be in, but it could be and should be uh, an issue of a national interest. And this is the first lesson that I have and I can take from the cyber to the AI initiative, that if you really as a nation 
to be an AI power and to deal with it, we should bring it into the government and have the right resolution to take it as one of the most important issues, meaning budget and new organization and other things that we should do. This is the first lesson that I can take. Okay, I would say that, uh, you know, usually when, when we started the cyber revolution then and when we are doing, trying to do the same now with AI, usually people ask me, how can you compete with the big ones, the, the USA, China, Russia, uh, everything you can do here in Israel, they can do with something like 100, sometimes even more times, 100 times even more uh, people, money, you name it. And how, 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 what is the base for your uh, assumptions that you can be one of the top five competing with these giants? And, and one of the main lessons that I think I learned from our previous experience is that uh, if you want to make a real revolution, it's not enough to take one aspect of our life, let's say technology, and put your, all your power, investment, and resources in, in, in this aspect. If you want uh, it to change the reality here in Israel, to change the economy, to change the way people behave, to change uh, subjects in, in um, uh, learning and research at universities or even in high school, etc. You need uh, to encompass all aspects of life and you need to deal with what we usually call the whole ecosystem. And if this uh, is required, then small countries like Israel have a big advantage. It's, it's not so simple to do something that will, uh, in which all the elements will be connected and involved together in big countries like, like uh, the USA or China. And here we have uh, a very dramatic advantage upon the giants. That's why, and, and, and it's not a theory, that's why we, we succeeded in the previous one, because you can ask the same questions about cybersecurity. So I, I, do, I totally agree with, uh, with you regarding this issue that uh, what made it a uh, success was the effort to build uh, a complete ecosystem and not just uh, invest or make an effort in one of the subjects of cybersecurity, but the whole system. By the way, we built uh, several ecosystems. One is, I call it uh, the defense ecosystem of how all the organizations work together in order to better defend the nation. Uh, another one is the more, I call it, uh, the capacity building ecosystem, meaning the, how the universities, the industry, and the government through, uh, um, um, of course, uh, human capital, how they work together to build an, an ecosystem of technology. And uh, here, um, if small countries have some advantages, I do agree, but I want and I would like to emphasize one very important point from my point of view. Small countries cannot uh, decide to be a, a real a global power in each and every issue or subject. It is impossible. We do not have the resources to do that. And uh, uh, we should decide which issues we have some uh, um, advantage in them, some competitive advantage, and where we really need to be uh, in order to be a, a real global power. Israel cannot decide that it could be everywhere in, in, in uh, all the high-tech uh, arena and in everything in AI to be a power. We should decide, we should choose. This is what small countries should do. And when we choose, yes, we can, uh, of course, use our ability to gather all the people that are relevant to such a, co uh, such a revolution together and to make uh, a more advanced and uh, quick uh, processes. And by saying this, I would say that uh, the real questions that we asked ourselves during the cyber, uh, cyber process that we did are those that we should ask ourselves. And we asked when we initiated the AI initiative. First, what is critical, meaning things that we should be in, otherwise we will not be a power in AI, and then where do we have some competitive advantages 
where we should put our investments and efforts in order to be global power. We cannot be everywhere in AI. And the same we do with cyber. We ask ourselves what is critical and where our competitive advantages lie. And this is exactly what we should do and we have already done uh, in the AI initiative. Okay, let's talk a little bit about our AI initiative, about our recommendations. Um, for certain reasons, uh, the government uh, uh, had not yet uh, discussed our uh, uh, recommendations and therefore it's still a, a proposal which was not approved. Uh, the, the main reason, of course, the, the for more than a year now, we didn't have at the beginning, we didn't have a, a government, I mean, only a continuation government, interim government, but not the government that can approve new uh, projects and new budget. And even today, when we have a government, still the problem of budget is not yet uh, solved. And, and that's why it was delayed. But now, um, and then the Corona, of course, but now we are coming, uh, it's, it's time now to launch it. And, and uh, some of the things that we already mentioned also led us in this new um, uh, program. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, but this time on top of uh, uh, recommendations which uh, regard the government, the industry and the um, uh, education system from schools up to uh, universities, they are the, these were the same elements that we talked, uh, we just talked about. On top of it, um, um, we also uh, added to, to the work that we did together, also a third axis, and this is the uh, use cases or applications of AI, because unlike cybersecurity in a sense is much more, uh, much narrower than AI. AI is something very wide, can be applied almost in any field of our life. And therefore we chose uh, certain fields. Um, uh, in each one of them, we had a subcommittee that um, recommended or wrote a, sub, uh, wrote a uh, report, it is part of the overall report, on what should, what could be done and should be done, let's say one of the area is health, okay? What should be done in the healthcare system uh, in order to improve uh, our health, the, the health of society uh, in, in Israel by using or, or applying uh, AI uh, technology. And, and the fields that we chose naturally were, uh, first of all, of course, healthcare, uh, then, then uh, um, transportation. I mean, we went by, by in, uh, we, we chose uh, those fields which, uh, in which we thought the technology is already mature enough to, uh, that we can define already not only trends, but also a project that will lead the industry. So healthcare, uh, transportation, uh, we added agriculture, we didn't start with it, but when, then we realized that this is uh, uh, a field with a lot of potential for AI. Uh, we add also, um, uh, uh, we had also one uh, subcommittee uh, to deal with um, uh, the banking and financial system, but then we learned that this is a sector in which uh, everything is, uh, they don't need too much uh, government involvement. Uh, and of course, uh, we don't have to forget the defense and security, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, I mean, every, everything we do, and this was dictated by the government, everything we do should serve at least uh, uh, two goals. Uh, one is the, uh, uh, economy or, uh, or welfare of society, and the other one is uh, security. Uh, can you speak a little bit more about uh, our recommendations? Yes, and um, I'll tell you what I would like to add. Uh, two important facts from my point of view. First, uh, as you presented it to those who do not know what exactly we did, we uh, divided our recommendations into several axes. 
axis. Meaning, we say the first thing is the uh, critical infrastructure that we should have in Israel in order to deal with AI, meaning uh, research infrastructures uh, and uh, which technologies we should advance and and um, and things like that. The second was second axis was um, what is uh, what will be the accelerators of everything, where we should invest in order to accelerate everything we did. So the first one is critic, critical. Well, if we do not have it, we will not succeed. Second one is how to accelerate. And then we went into the projects that you are talking about. And what's important to emphasize in them is that we searched for projects, for national projects that um, collaborate some um, uh, I would say competitive advantages of Israel into uh, sections and specific issues which could be uh, which could be advanced through a national project. Meaning, it's not that every project that was uh, uh, that uh, someone put on the table we 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 dealt with. We searched for the specific ones, and you mentioned several of them where we can build an, 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 a small ecosystem which will gain us. Uh, some benefits both in, in, inside Israel, meaning in a specific sector. For example, if you're talking about healthcare, we'll advance the healthcare in Israel, but in parallel, we'll also advance Israel as, uh, as an exporter of uh, solutions and technologies in healthcare. That's what we search for. The same with agriculture or transportation. The, because we know that AI uh, may benefit each and every sector. But we decided that those that the government should invest more than everything in are those that we can uh, benefit both from uh, inside, meaning the sector will be better, and uh, uh, from the perspective of uh, using our advantage in order to export and build uh, an economy around it. Um, I'd like to add one more thing because I saw some uh, question about asking me why AI? Why AI? Why, why not, for example, uh, uh, quantum computing or, or other issues? Why AI? Why the government should focus on, on AI? And this is something which I'd like um, uh, to comment about b before you uh, proceed. And uh, when asking why, we, why the government decided, the prime minister and the government decided uh, to invest in cyber, we understand that it was from... Um, a security point of view, that this is going to be one of the most important and risky threats that we have, and we should invest and do much more than others in this area. So everything started from the most security point of view and went on to build not just a solution for our defense, but also capacity building and, uh, uh, and, and, and a real economy around it, an ecosystem of technologies and economy. When coming to AI, I think that uh, the rationale that was behind the understanding of the Prime Minister to ask for initiative in it was that AI is an infrastructure of technolog technological infrastructure. This is uh, uh, so important for every, I think, uh, for everyone who's going to deal with high tech in the future, for every infrastructure of high tech in the future, for the future of the high tech in Israel. And since the high tech in Israel is critical for our national security, is uh, responsible for uh, something like 50% uh, of our export and uh, is very important for our national security as a whole, both from the economical point of view, but also from the um, uh, military point of view. We understand that without AI, we will not be able to continue being a high-tech power, innovation power in the future. And this is why AI and not uh, other issues of, for example, biotechnology or other uh, technologies that we may think about. The way I see it is that uh, you cannot really uh, afford, every time there is a new technology, you start building a whole ecosystem. We already said that you, you need the whole ecosystem. You cannot build a new, entirely new ecosystem from zero every time you have a different technology. Now, in Israel, Fortunate, uh, fortunately enough, in the late 70s, uh, beginning of the 80s, we started building uh, a very good, healthy, successful ecosystem for what we call high-tech. And high-tech is about 
computers, communication, computerized communication, hardware, software as well, etc. Uh, and you, when, you, uh, when you think about cyber, it's again about computers, computers, communication, etc. When you think about AI, it's again uh, more or less the same uh, discipline. So we already have, and we already had in 2010 when we started, a very developed ecosystem for high tech. So the only thing we had to do then is to shift it a little bit, not a big shift a little bit towards cybersecurity, and now we are trying to shift it a little bit towards AI. Uh, 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 let, but let me, let me continue immediately and say that by using the word AI, we look at it um, uh, in a very wide sense. It's not only people, usually when people speak about AI, they speak about artificial uh, um, uh, intelligent machines that learn, machine learning, neural networks, and, and also what we call data science. That is analyzing by machines a huge sets of uh, data in order to get out of it some uh, insights. Um, when we speak about AI, uh, we speak about a wider uh, concept. Like, for example, all the, uh, uh, I mean, the whole world is now uh, talking about AI, but it is, this happened only, started to be so only in the last few years, less than five years. And the reason that it happened only five years and not 50 years ago, and I say it because almost every, all the ideas that today we implement have roots in, 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 in uh, written papers from the 50s, early 50s. The reason is that the power of computation at that time, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, the power of computation was not enough to carry out all these uh, uh, machine learning algorithms, etc. And therefore, we look uh, at the power of computation as an essential element of the AI capability of Israel. And therefore, we had one subcommittee that dealt with this, power computation. And when, when I say power computation, it may be supercomputers, that is clusters of cores. It may be uh, uh, computing using the cloud. It may be accelerators. It may be, in the future, also um, um, uh, quantum computing that, that you mentioned. Of course, certain uh, areas are more mature, certain of them we are just starting and we have to decide how much to invest and uh, what in what stage to increase it in order to have it, but this is on, only one aspect. There are other technologies that if you look at the overall capability of it, should be included also in the overall AI capability, like for example, uh, what is called IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, uh, because here we talk about sensors that talk with each other and then enable the machines that learn to learn fast from sensors spread all over the country, etc. And of course, robotics, etc. And I don't want to mention all the fields, but the approach is very wide. Um, that's why we called it uh, the smart, uh, smart Secure System Initiative and not the AI Initiative. So uh, regularly when we talk with other people in other states, we, we call it the AI so that it will be much clearer for them. But uh, the, real, the real name of the initiative is the Smart Secure System because Smart System is, is a much wider uh, thing than just uh, AI technology that we see. So I totally agree with it. And if you, if you look at the, our recommendations, uh, the first exit, the critical infrastructure, the, the first thing is computing power. Where our, the, our first recommendation inside the critical uh, infrastructure, inside the first exit is computing power. And then uh, of course, other things such as uh, clouds and, and uh, the second uh, recommendation is data, meaning the ability of the government to give its data for a better research and, for, uh, and to the private sector. And then by the way, another thing is human capital, because when we talked about smart system and AI, we didn't just concentrate in uh, the specific technologies. We look at the broader view. And this is why our first uh, exit, the three, Critical infrastructures are computing power, 
and then uh, data, the government should give its data, and then uh, human capital. These are the three critical issues. And then our enablers, by the way, the second exist is the uh, cyber security. That's why we call it from the beginning, the smart secured uh, um, uh, systems initiative, because we believe that we will be able to really um, benefit from this revolution only if it is secured. And the second enabler is ethics and regulation. So cyber security, ethics and regulations are enablers. They are not critical, they are enablers. Taking together these critical accommodations and these enablers explain our broad, our very broad point of view of perspective. And only then above them, we built our recommendation for, uh, for the national projects uh, to go with in order to get all the benefit from it. But I will ask uh, you uh, to continue what I said and talk about our uh, very important, our first or our last recommendation regarding how to organize the whole issue of AI in Israel by the government uh, quite the same as we did with cyber, because we, you and I, and I emphasize you, not other people, but the thing that uh, most of the people that had to, that worked in the government understand that the right organization and the right structure is critical for success. Yeah, well, uh, as, as, uh, as we understand it, uh, this is not an issue that can, can be separated from the other uh, ministries, okay? There are many ministries. Each ministry in Israel is uh, responsible for certain area, education, economy, et cetera, et cetera. Here we deal with a, a multidisciplinary problem, and therefore the only way we see that can, in which it can be managed is by something which is not, uh, does not belong to one ministry, but to, uh, as we did in the cyber uh, 10 years ago, to the prime minister office. Uh, but then, you know, these, these are, uh, we, we talked about data, for example, okay? The, there's a lot that you, that you can do if you, you take data from certain different sources and cross the data and find, with, with machine learning, find some insights that will improve our life. But the problem usually is not technological. The problem is that usually organizations, uh, uh, especially governmental organizations, do not like to share their data because, as Francis Bacon said 500 years ago, uh, knowledge is power, okay? And you don't want to give it. These are human problems and not technological problems. We have to solve it. So the way we see it, that we need a very strong, and when I say strong, I mean of, of uh, the, the uh, I'm speaking about the quality of people that will be in this uh, new administration or, or directorate, you name it. In Hebrew, we say minhelet. I don't know what is the right uh, term for it, administration maybe, in the prime, uh, prime minister office, not to do everything that we just said, but only to, to, to take care that all the rest ministries and organizations and bodies and the academy and industry and you name it, everyone will do is share in a coordinated way like it was done in, in cybersecurity. Now we have only one uh, minute. One. Just one. To the just, end, uh, so we have, you have one minute there, uh, Evita. I think we have several minutes, but uh, no problem. I, I just want to add that I call it an umbrella organization, umbrella administration, uh, to the, the project manager of all, the, of all other ministries. And if this uh, new organization holds the right budget, uh, it has the right power as an umbrella organization, to deal with all the ministries and all the industry in order to uh, advance what we need to do. I believe, and from my experience with the cyber evolution, that without such um, an uh, administration, uh, the government cannot really succeed uh, in such a revolution. This is oh, my, let uh, me add only that when you say budget, we mean uh, a significant budget. We estimated the, the, after the work of uh, all the subcommittees, we estimated the investment needed by the government to be around 2 billion shekels a, a year. 
And my last words will be uh, 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 thanking all the 300 and more people that uh, were involved, no one was paid by the way, uh, were involved in this uh, huge work and, uh, and created this uh, plan submitted to the government. So I hope uh, to answer your question. And since uh, we are just now in time, since we both had a military background, we will respect the timing. Thank you all.